Today, we're going to use the value finder again in order to find the color dabs we need to make a poignant painting. Let's get started. So first, let's look at the two things together. These are the values that I found to use in the painting. The D column are the darks, the M is the mediums, and I didn't even put the lights in because the lights you can't even see through the value finder. But you can compare and contrast both the colored version and also the non-colored version. And that is just putting a piece of plexiglass in front so it neutralizes the color and allows you to see pretty clearly how dark or light something is. So if I had done this perfectly, all my darks would be the same value and all my mediums would see, be the same value. And as you can see, I might have made a mistake or two. It also might mean that I looked at it through the value finder and decided I did make the mistake and therefore didn't use the um, dab at all. Here's the final painting, but we're going to get to that. It's a poignant painting. I'm calling it a poignant painting because uh, Callie, our collie dog, has not been on a walk now for nearly five days because it's been super hot around here. All right, the first thing that I do is put in some watered down Naples yellow in order to find the whites that I want to leave. And this is because I don't use masking fluid. I just tried to use masking fluid two days ago and it went so badly that I threw every bit of masking fluid that I have in the house out. It never works for me. I am done with that stuff. So after making sure that my whites are taken care of, now I'm going to start with my darks. And what I mean by the whites is wherever that Naples yellow is, I'm determined not to drive over it. Now I'm squinting my eyes and looking at any dark shapes, and I'm putting those in. And as you can see in the dark column, so there's going to be some color. There's going to be purple. There's something that leans toward red, almost a violet. And that's because I don't want my um, I don't I don't want a monochromatic painting. Um, and in some ways, when you have a photograph, and I know this has happened to you, you have a photograph that doesn't quite meet your needs. If you can make the painting better than the photograph, I say hats off to you, because it's not about recreating the photograph, because that's not why we paint. It's about an interpretation. So I'm sticking with my darks and putting them in, but as you can see, there are quite a variety of darks. And occasionally that value finder, that piece of red plexiglass jumps up so I can take a look. Now I've tipped a little bit. I'm tipping into the mid column now. Everything in the mid column, according to my strategy, everything now has to be lighter than what I put in in my dark column. If I do that, then I'm following my strategic plan, which is to outline my whites at the very beginning, not drive over them, put in my darks that are all about the same value, and then move on to my mid-tones or, um, or what I call the M column, and leaving the lights, which I'll get to. There are very few lights in this painting, and I think if you looked closely at the photograph, yeah, you can see why. There's no direct sunlight coming in. There's sunlight outside, but there's no actual sunlight in the house. So even the whites in this painting uh, aren't white. So um, so things are going according to plan. And I should also say, when you pick a photograph, one of the nice things to do is ask yourself, why am I picking this photograph? Yes, it was a poignant dog looking outside, sort of resigned and hopeful to some degree that something would happen today. So I like the body language. But what really made me want to do this painting is that the foreground tends to be mostly darks. So those dark shapes interested me because they were balanced against the darkness of the collie and then the rest of it was relatively light. So I liked the contrast of darks against lights. That is what interest, interested me. You always got to find something, something, or I do, I have to find a reason to paint it and for me that was the reason. Now outside the um, Outside is where it is the lightest because it's getting direct sunlight. So I don't even, you can see, I didn't even put anything in the light column. Probably because by now I, I know what's going to read as light. You know, and the closer that I get into yellows, yellow isn't going to register through the value finder at all. Reds, are, reds and oranges are tricky. They're, they're very hard to see through the value finder. It's more that you get a feel for them. But... That's where I find the value finder the most helpful is when it comes to reds and greens 
because sometimes it's hard for me to determine how light or dark they are compared to the other colors. And that's just, it just fools my eye. So things are going pretty good. And I probably stopped here for a while. Well, I guess I didn't. I guess I kept going. So, um, so I also like the honey color of the floor. And I knew that the yellow of the floor was going to provide a brightness and also a contrast to those violets because they're complementary colors. And you can see the value finder suddenly is making an appearance pretty frequently. And that's because I'm checking all the time. I gotta make sure that I'm sticking with my value plan from the very beginning. Because if I don't, if I mess things up now and start putting in darks willy nilly, it will upset the whole path and strategy that got me here. Now what I'm doing is going over some colors just to reinforce and get them to be more bright. Uh, it's, that's not going to change the value in any way at all. <laughs> People think that if you add the same color on top of the same color over and over and over again, it's going to tip the value, but it doesn't. It will make the color brighter, or depending on what you put over that color, it can make it duller. But this is what the real painting really looks like in light. And I used as few strokes as possible. And there's our Cali dog looking outside in a poignant way. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.